Hello everybody, it is Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in today's video I'll be giving you a tour of my MacBook Air's macOS 10.8.4 setup. So here's my uh, desktop. I have a nice wallpaper. In fact, I can go show you where I got it. It came from interfacelift.com. Let's go to free wallpaper downloads and it's one of their recent uploads as well, so it might be on the front page still. Here it is, it's called Blue Mountains, so you can just search for that in the search box and you should be able to find this wallpaper. So I like it, it's clean, it's simple, it's blue, one of my favorite colors. Actually, I don't really have a favorite color, I like all colors really, but blue is typically the one I would put above the rest, I guess. So that's the wallpaper that I'm using if you wanna find it yourself. But here's my desktop, I have the 2D dock, you could Google Mac OS X, 2D dock and you, it should show you how to do it. It's a very simple terminal command that changes your dock from the 3D style to the 2D one. I like this a little bit better. Um, I only have two icons on my desktop, my Mac, my Macintosh HD partition and my Windows 8 partition. Um, in my dock, I don't really have too much. I have notes, which I haven't opened, but I will since school starts up next week. I'll have this open automatically and on my desktop, I'll have the uh, to-do list for whatever I have to do in my classes, usually stuck up in the upper left corner. I use Google Chrome as my primary web browser. I use Tweetbot as my Twitter client. I have Skype on here. I don't really open this too much. I have Steam on here. I can't remember the last time I opened it on my MacBook Air because it's open 24 seven on my desktop. Of course I use iMessage quite a bit, so that's what iMess or messages is for. I use Mail as my mail client iTunes, of course, and I have ScreenFlow recording this video right now. In my menu bar, I have ScreenFlow because I'm recording this video right now with it. Dropbox. Um, this one is called iClean Memory. It lets you free up some memory if you need to have more. I usually run this before opening a Windows 8 in my virtual machine or Linux if I have to go into there. I'm using LogMeIn to let me remotely access my MacBook Air whenever I need to. Then I'm using something called iSnap, which allows me to snap a window to the left half of the screen or the right half of the screen very easily. Very similar to the Windows Vista on up uh, style of doing things. I use Time Machine to backup. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done a backup, so I'll have to do one soon. Wi-Fi sound, battery, date, search, notification center, which I have turned off so nothing bothers me. For this video, if I bring up Launchpad, Here's everything I have installed. Every application is neatly organized on here, either in their folders or just here regularly. So of course we have the utilities folder and we have the stocks, or the stock application folder. You might actually notice that some are missing and that's because I removed a lot of the .app files or folders rather because .app is just a container with other stuff inside of it. But I remo removed I should say, a lot of the stock applications because a lot of those I never used. Um, reminders is still here, I need to get rid of that one, but some of them are missing. DVD player is gone. I mean, the MacBook Air doesn't have a DVD drive, so it's a little bit useless unless you're using an external drive. But I did remove a number of stock applications, including some of the ones in the utilities folder. So here in the in dock folder are the exact same icons that I have here in my dock. Those don't need to be anywhere else. I might as well just put them in their own folder. Here we have auto. So this includes the applications that start up automatically once I log in. Here we have the other folder for Office 2011. Kind of wish none of these were here. Don't need them. Oh, I guess I could get rid of those as well. I have Photoshop CS5 Air Server for AirPlay mirroring my iPhone over to my computer. Android file transfer for whenever I need to transfer something from an Android device over to the MacBook Air or vice versa. Audacity for recording audio. I usually use this for my podcasts and I use this for all of my videos where I have my actual video camera. So I record the audio track with Audacity and I sync them up inside of my video editor which is Sony Vegas on my desktop. I have cleaned my Mac for occasionally cleaning out the cache files for different apps and I also use this for completely trashing the applications themselves. Um, there was a time not too long ago where there were a bunch of random files on my MacBook Air. 
eating up a lot of space, so this was able to tell me which ones those were. I have Disk 8 for accessing my iOS device's file system. Of course, I'm not really jailbroken, so Disk 8 and iPhone Box are a little useless to me at the moment. I have FileZilla for FTP, Handbrake for video conversions. Of course, I have Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. Minecraft, which I I haven't opened it on here in a long time, actually. Parallels Desktop for my virtual machines. ScreenFlow for recording videos like the one you're watching now. SMB Up, which is Samba Up. Samba is a sort of file transfer protocol for when you're on a local network. So I use this so I can access my MacBook Air's file system for my desktop, my iPhone, anything. Team Viewer for remotely helping other people with their computer problems. The Unarchiver, which opens .rar files. Theme Park, which is able to open resource files for applications such as iTunes, so you can see all the little images that are embedded into it, such as, you know, the iPod thumbnail images and things like that. I have TypeFoo, which allows me to check out my typing speed. Haven't opened that in a while. uTorrent, VLC, Wi-Fi Explorer. I used this when I was testing out a couple of different routers and to uh, see the ranges that my router currently supports in the house, if that made any sense. I don't even know what I just said. And I also have WinClone Pro, which I use for backing up my Windows 8 partition on my MacBook Air. Speaking of my Windows 8 partition, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and go ahead and show you my Windows 8 partition on my MacBook Air. But if you have any questions or comments about this video or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.